Hi, my name is Cleopatra Trangosi. I am born again and I'm a lover of Christ. I'm very passionate about the youth, bringing them to the knowledge of Christ, especially in a world like this where everything else is normal except the word of God amongst the youth. So yeah, that's it about me. And I've been given the privilege by Noble Hearts to answer three questions and I hope you're blessed as you follow as I answer the questions. Now I have some notes in front of me so I'll be looking down every now and then. So yeah, the first question is so it's sex before marriage a sin. Yes. Yes. I believe and I know that sex before marriage is a sin. You know, there's a famous saying that says if the purpose of a thing is not known, then abuse is inevitable. So if you don't know the purpose of something, then you're going to abuse it because well you don't know take a two-year-old or a baby even baby newborn baby or even a two-year-old for example give them your iphone 13 they don't know the purpose they're just gonna smash it on the floor you know they're abusing it because they don't know and you know hair dryer hair dryer is meant for drying the hair but if you take it and use it and the pot to stir your soup then you're using it all wrong because it's only meant to dry hair so everything else has a purpose including sex sex is a gift from god for a specific people but if you don't know the purpose which many don't well that's when it's then abused in fact there are some cultures that do not support sex before marriage it's considered a taboo you need to be married first you need yeah before you can have sex but above culture we lean on the scripture so first corinthians 6 verse 9 reads Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 9 talks about fornicators and adulterers. These are people who abuse sex. They're having sex with the wrong people people they're not supposed to be having sex with and like i said earlier everything has a purpose including sex now the purpose of god the purpose of um sex um god initiated sex for the married for reproduction for pleasure and also because sex between two married people glorifies god um current first corinthians 7 verse 3 to 4 read let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife has not power over her own body, but the husband, and likewise the husband has not power over his own body, but the wife. So husbands owe it to their wives, not boyfriends to their girlfriends. Sex is a very serious thing, and I can even go as far as saying sex is a very dangerous thing if done wrongly with the wrong person. It doesn't only end on the physical part of intercourse. In fact, sex is more spiritual than physical. A lot of things are exchanged during sex. That is why it's for the married. Because when you when you get when you get married, you become one. So no matter the exchange, you're one anyway. So yeah, it's it's not only sexually transmitted diseases that are transmitted during sex. There are also sexually transmitted demons when done wrong with the wrong person. There are a lot of people carrying different things, curses, and all those things are transmitted from one person to another during sex. This is why I said it can even be dangerous. Sex is only for the married, people who are married before God. And sex is only for two married people. One is female and one is male. So marriage between two males or two females, it's not right. It's an abomination of the highest. Romantic love, marriage, sex is only between a man and a woman because God made them male and female. Romans 1 verse 28 to 31 read, And even as they do not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despite, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient parents, um, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, sorry, without natural affection, implacable and unmerciful. So verse 30 mentions inventors of evil. So two women getting married or two men getting married is not god's idea of romantic love it was invented by the father of all lies 
the devil. He has deceived many into thinking that they have feelings for the same gender instead of the opposite gender. And it's fast spreading. You know, even some churches now, they, they, they marry two people. They marry two, two people of the same gender. And it's, it's a norm in the world. But just because the world is a norm in the world doesn't make it right. Only the word of God is true. Let God be true, but every man a liar. So, yeah. Now, the second question um, is this. What about those who have had marriage before sex? Well, for those who have had marriage before sex, um, well, yes, they have done something wrong. They have sinned, no doubt. But how beautiful it is that we serve a kind, a loving, and a forgiving father. You know, since sex before marriage is a sin and God forgives sins, then there is hope for those who didn't, who didn't know and for those who didn't even care to know and those who didn't care to believe. So no one should ever feel like God can never forgive them. No one should feel like they're beyond repair or beyond forgiveness. For as long as God is on the throne, God forgives. So don't write yourself off. God forgives. He does not condemn us. Um, 1 John 1 verse 9 is, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God forgives. Please don't condemn yourself. Just go back to God and ask for forgiveness. But... The only problem with sex or with sin in general is that we we get we go so deep into sin that by the time we return to God and ask for forgiveness, yes, He forgives us, He even forgets, but we still have to deal with the consequences of those sins. So it's part of life, and God is not going to suspend laws just because you and I decided to repent. No, He's not going to do that. There are people who have killed, they have repented, God forgave them, and they are probably going to heaven. But they still have to go to jail as long as they're on earth because it's the law. The people who indulged in sex, they got pregnant and they regretted and they asked, they repented, God forgave them. And they're probably going to heaven, but hey, they're still on earth. They still have to carry the child and deliver the child. So forgiveness is not equal to pardon. And God will forgive you and even forget the sin, write your name in the book of life. But for as long as you're on earth, sometimes... You have to face the consequences. You know, the law cannot protect you from that. He's not going to suspend laws for you. So that's the danger of premarital sex. Forgiveness of sin might not save you from the consequences. So better to avoid it. Um, um, the last question, the third question. Describe the marriage of the bride. The scriptural reference. So um, let's look at... um. A few scriptures before we answer that. So, Second Corinthians 11 verse 2 reads, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste, chaste virgin to Christ. And then Isaiah 54 verse 5 to 6 reads, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the land, for the Lord had called thee, as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, save thy God. Ephesians 5, 23-23 reads, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. So, this marriage, the marriage in this context, it, it symbolizes the union between Christ and the church. Christ is is the groom and the church which is which are the saints you know they're the bride who will experience the first resurrection this will take place before the coming of christ and one of the significances why this is going to take place before the second coming of christ is to remove the saints before the antichrist and before the tribulation now it is important to note that only those who belong to christ will are qualified those those are the ones who have not who are not distracted by the affairs of this world who remain focused having their gaze only on jesus and holiness will be one of the greatest requirements so going to church every sunday and speaking in tongues unfortunately is not enough to qualify you when the bridegroom comes for his bride matthew 25 talks about the mystery of the ten virgins this mystery is likened to the kingdom of heaven so this this women they are 10 and they are all virgins and they all had lamps the only difference is that five were wise you know to bring extra oil and the others were foolish not to bring extra oil but apart from that they're all qualified to go to the bride 
to go with the bridegroom to the marriage now but this means that nobody knows when Jesus is coming for his bride so we should live ready as his bride people judge us according to our actions actions they see with their eyes but God judges us according to what is in our heart you know there are many people who go to church religiously and as a routine but their hearts are not even there Matthew 7 verse 21 says not everyone that said unto me Lord Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he that does the will of my father which is in heaven so the question is are we doing the father's will it's just because some people call on the name of Jesus does not mean they automatically qualify for each and every one of us it's either gonna be well done thou thou faithful servant or the wicked and slothful servant so any of these two statements is determined you know by what our works on earth what have we done have we done the will of the father Ephesians 5 verse 27 said that he might present it to himself for a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that it should be holy and without blemish for Christ is coming for a church without blemish without spot without wrinkle you know Matthew 5 48 Jesus instructs us to be perfect just as our Heavenly Father is perfect now God is not wicked you know he's not gonna instruct us to do something that is impossible it means that he has given us the grace to be perfect and the grace is sufficient you know he cannot instruct us to do the impossible the only thing is that being perfect requires one to obtain grace to die daily to die to the things of this world and for Christ to truly be alive in him that is the only way to be blameless when Christ comes for his bride now the question is will you be ready will I be ready for that great day you know are we ready and for anyone who is tangled up with the things of the world i would really like to encourage you to go back to god rededicate your life and, and live for him it's possible because that great day is coming and it is nigh so that's it for the three questions and as for where people can reach me um well i'm not really much of a social person i'm just i'm so introverted whether in person or on social media so but i do have a facebook account my facebook i am um Cleopatra Ngozi. Yeah. So thank you so much. And for those who do not follow Noble Hearts, like, what are you waiting for? They have great content which will bless you a whole lot. So I encourage you to like, to subscribe, and to share and to keep following Noble Hearts and be blessed as you do so. God bless you. <laughs>